Greetings, YouTube. Chester here, 45Y music producer and composer. Welcome back to the channel. And we are not going to deep dive into a sample library for this video. Rather, I want to talk about a subject that's been coming up when we've been deep diving with these sample libraries. And I was on a Facebook group recently uh, with sample libraries and someone also made a post that they are hearing this noise that's going on when they add you know, dynamics and, and compression to their sound, asking, you know, for help on how to resolve that. That was something that I've been showing as I do the reviews. And so rather than that keep happening and keep going, and as I was researching it for them and looking into it, I kind of realized, took a step back and, and thought that maybe I can explain this a little better as to what is going on here, and then uh, show a couple tips or, or ways of how to alleviate this, get this kind of managed for you. So what we're talking about here is something called noise floor, not necessarily tape hiss. I'm, I was kind of saying it sounds like that and is that, but really what it is, is it's noise floor. It's more than that of tape hiss, although that could contribute to it. So noise floor is, you think of it as like self-generated noise. If you're sitting in your room right now, you take your headphones out. If you have them in, close your eyes, pause this video and, and just take five seconds to like listen to the room around you. And that's a room tone, right? You, you'll have this sound that's going on. Very low, very quiet, but it exists. If your HVAC system is on, mine's up here in the corner, it'll have a hum, right? That's part of this noise floor. My dog snoring up above me, coming in just very faint, quietly, can add to all of this, this noise that's happening at such a low level. But there's not only just that interference, like Wi-Fi interference or cell phone interference can cause it, uh, the electronics that are going through our setup can have uh, kind of a hum to them, grounding and, and things like that, for example. All this can contribute to what we know as noise floor. And then there's something also called signal to noise ratio that we need to understand high level. And what that is, is the ratio between the signal, which is in this case, my voice uh, being recorded for this video and then the noise floor uh, within my room. And it would be my responsibility based on my setup and my processing and everything that I'm doing that it's a healthy ratio. Uh, there's no tried and true ratio here. It's just making sure I have it set noise floor here, signal here, just best as possible, how I, I'd like it. And you would do very much the same in, in your situation. And then that's what these library companies, they hire engineers, right, to record and produce the samples. And then they therefore send them off to teams, work them in contact, uh, get them mapped out, test them out, make them work. And they also have this obligation to signal to noise ratio. And they do a stellar job with that. That's that's one of the things they'll check off their boxes, right? When they release these libraries, they come to us with a healthy signal to noise ratio, or so we'd hope, right? Then what we do at times is we need to compete with our market. We need to be louder or just as loud as, as anyone else. Think of trailer music, for example. So if we're using Spitfire libraries for trailer, we're going to have to crank these uh, quiet libraries. Uh, some of them are quiet pretty loud, get them really uh, aggressive in our mix. And the best way to do that is start introducing dynamic processing, turning up the volumes, right? Getting things going. And so we take that signal to noise ratio or that, that uh, noise floor that they have and we're squashing and we're increasing the volume. So this is set, right? They, we bought the library at this, we put it into our DAW, we're squishing it and we're bringing it up. And now we hear the noise, this noise floor, because we've put it up to a certain volume that makes it audible and loud in our mixes and, and more apparent. And that's kind of on us now at that point, because they suggested, hey, this is where you should be. And then it comes up here. So now when it's up here, we need to uh, fix it in our mix. And that's okay. A couple of things about that that I want to say here is, one, this is not a blocker to make music. So don't don't stop what you're doing or, or, or not release because you're like, ah, I got all this noise now. Noise floor is, is very important in our lives. It's it's in everything. We hear it everywhere. It's it's kind of normal to have it, right? It's it's almost now a staple and just as important to have it than to not, right? So we just need to manage it. 
Now, all we have to do is just make sure that it's managed. And at the end of the day, it's it's either low or it's as low as we can make it. Sounds like someone's at my door. Uh, one second. All right, back. Uh, sorry about that. I had to get the door. Uh, where were we? Noise floor. Yes, having to manage it. Right. And so the other thing that we need to think about is that without it, we would have a really clean library. It, it just wouldn't sound the same. We, we buy these libraries, right, with the idea that an intent that... They come from the room they say they do, these world-renowned recording stages. They are real players, real instruments. Uh, we have renowned engineers, right, that were hired to to record it and set up the microphones and the configurations that we need and desire. They, we bought all that, right? And so with it coming in with that noise floor, that's to be expected. I mean, that's what we purchased. We have all that sound that they collected. And then also the processing that they've used, uh, all the gear that they've had, and then all of the microphone options that they've selected, right? These are things that we want and researched and said, yes, we want that library. It sounds beautiful. Uh, let me have that, right? And then you buy it with your hard-earned dollars and you're using it. That's kind of just how it works, okay? So let's go into the DAW and let's start looking at this uh, and how we can just solve it quickly and get moving and uh, create the music that we need, okay? So here we are. First thing I want to do is I want to bring up maybe this site uh, because I don't have this plugin, but I want to show you that this is an option for you in case you do, or in case you're really looking to extinguish this altogether. Isotope has made uh, a really, this is a huge part of the market here, is their RX series, and they have a way to de-noise de and de-hum audio and uh, kind of remove it or, or manage it, if you will. So this is a good option for you if you're looking for that, if you already own it, or if you have some money to invest and you really need to clean, you need to clean that mix up and get rid of it all together. So I would learn this. This is gonna help you out. Otherwise, there are many, many, Denoise options out there. Waves has a bunch. A lot of people have a bunch. I'm sure Plugin Alliance has, has yeah, they do. They have some options also. And then also, what am I saying? Oh, a gate. You could use one. I just don't like them they, they, for this situation because they won't sound as natural. And you're going to spend a lot of time trying to find that envelope every time you hear noise floor. And that's just a lot of time. So let's look at what I have here. Okay. Let's just pretend that we have a client and they wanted brass in their media. So we load up Albion 1, and I'm just using Brad Mid for this example because I know it's pretty easy to hit their uh, noise floor on this. It sounds like this. At the moment, I loaded everything in just as is. And uh, also, by the way, I'm not going to edit the audio on this video like I do the others uh, because I don't want to remove any of the noise. I'm, I'm showing how to manage the noise. So this is unedited audio. All right, so we're hearing it as we load it and we send that off to the client and they say, cool, you got the right sound, but we need it louder, we need it big. So you're like, okay, well, let's make it forte. First thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna check my dynamics expression. I see they're all the way up. That sounds great. I see we have the tree mic here. Let's try the close mic, we'll add that in, put it all the way up. That's already helping. Fuller sound, and then let's bring this up to one five. Loads negative six, but I know we can get up there without clipping. As long as I'm not in the red here, I feel pretty good about that. We send that off to them because we've kind of exhausted ourselves in this uh, this tool here in contact. And they say, can you make it louder? Comes back and we're like, yeah, I guess we're going to have to use some processing now, right? So I have a ba uh, brass bus here. I'm going to turn that on. And now it sounds like this. Nice and big. Uh, I would hope that that would help, but sure it wouldn't. So let's grab OTT, uh, multi-band compression setting, pretty infamous, and we're going to turn it on, and it's set to 100%, so this is wild. I would, you would never kind of do this realistically, but here it is. And that, my friends, is the noise that we've been talking about, that noise floor. So that's that's a culmination of a lot of things. I was calling it tape hiss, and I apologize for calling it just that. That It's a culmination of a lot of things. All right, so what we're going to do here is we, we would normally dial that down realistically, and then I'm just looking to see plus or minus 2, 3 dB here. And I see up here at a high, which is can be common. It'll it'll be a bit higher, and that's that's okay. And I, I'm not hearing too much noise floor here, so I'd probably be okay with doing that, continuing on and submitting. But for the sake of this, sometimes we do run into the situation where the the noise floor is still there, and we can hear it very well. So let's pretend we're just gonna throw this up to 100 and just hear this noise in in 
find ways to fix it. So here we have Neutron 3 Sculptor, which is kind of like a smart EQ dynamics type processor. It kind of just helps makes your signal more pleasing in a smart way. Golfos is out there. Neutron's out there. There's a few of these options. Uh, Soothe uh, is, is similar, different, but similar. A lot, a lot of things like that. So you could use one of these plugins to help kind of mitigate or at least get a good start on this. And we can see it kind of working here. We can see it kind of helping a little bit, but you'll notice that this by itself or alone is not going to solve anything. It's not going to do much. That's kind of why I wanted to show that, but it, it, it only helps. So you could have a little bit of that. I have an EQ here that I've set up to help, help kind of shape the sound a little bit, tame it. We're still hearing it, right? Notice I didn't use a low pass filter. It changes the, the timbre and the color of this a little too much for me, so I, I didn't use it, but you could if you needed. Just kind of depends on your whole mix, your whole orchestra, right? We're listening to one ensemble, one instrument here. When you have a whole orchestra and a whole mix, it'll sound a little bit different. Your noise floor actually in this situation might be solved because a lot of these other instruments could be masking it really well. So just keep that in mind too. And that's why I was saying earlier, it's not all that important because you can mask it pretty easily with other instruments if you need. But if you can't, then this is where, where we're going. All right, so Transient Master is another really good uh, way to help uh, these plugins because you can bring the sustain down quite a bit and kind of leave the attack where, where you want it set. We have the sustain here down to 32. I, I don't go usually beyond 50, kind of starts sounding a little weird, and I would rather just fix it you know, elsewhere. But this is a great option uh, for you if you need something like this. So I have it down to 32. I probably could even bring it down a little bit more, but we'll just start there. And this will help us a little bit. And it ramps a little bit more though. So we're kind of wondering what we can do here. And I would go to OTT. First, I would go back here and I don't have an ADS or I don't have a release. I have no way to manage the noise. Otherwise you would usually try there, but let's go to OTT and see what we can't do other than dialing down that amount, right? The first thing I noticed is there is a release. Dynamics processors will give us some, some sort of tack and release sort of settings. So I'm going to increase that. And I know that I can go up to around four or five seconds and should solve it or help. And notice it, it has. But we also can do some other things. I'm going to bring that back a little bit, dial that back. So it does also sound kind of somewhat unnatural. And I'm going to turn this just the output in the input down. I'm going to manage this high. I'm also going to bring this up because it's kind of affecting anything beyond, well, definitely above 2K. It's more kind of maybe near around 4K and up. Actually, it's everywhere, but the the real loud stuff that we don't want, the what we're trying to prevent, that's where it is. All right, and then we still get some of that at the end, and maybe there's ways to uh, gate or chop that or, or get rid of that. Finally, the last thing I would do is I would definitely dial this down more, and I think I could bring it down to like even like here. Sounds pretty good. With a combination of these things, we can find our, ourselves fixing that noise floor, still keeping the dynamics alive in, in our sound and then giving, I would add reverb to this too. It sounds actually rather dry, but giving uh, that client that huge brass sound that they wanted while also managing that noise floor because we can't deliver something like this with that much noise. We do need to manage it a little bit, especially if we're bringing up that volume, right? Cool. So I hope that that was helpful. I also hope that we've been able to explain this a little bit for you so that you know and understand that we're kind of causing this as we turn up the volume, as we squash these sounds a bit, we are impacting that noise floor that they have set, right? That's okay. I mean, we, we have to. We have to achieve a certain dynamic now uh, for our clients if they need it. And all we just need to do is just manage that noise a little bit. And you can do it in many ways, like I was saying. In fact, what I'll do is I will link in the description some ways that I have found to help with this and, and maybe some more tutorials on explaining this even more than I have today. And if you also are savvy and, and hip to removing your noise floor and managing it, uh, chat in the comments how you're doing it right now. I think that would be very helpful for all of us. Thank you so much for watching and supporting this channel. I've been seeing it grow lately and it's been really incredible to see this journey uh, and this, this channel kind of taking shape. I had no idea 
uh, when I started this, if, if anything would come from it and really thrilled that, uh, some of you care and, and have been coming back to the channel and, and watching these videos. So thank you so much. Uh, if this is your first time here, welcome. Um, please like, and subscribe and, and, uh, looking forward to making more videos for you in the future. So thank you. Take care. Have a good one.